Hi, friends, and welcome. I am your hot mess of a host, Mary Hendricks from The Very Merry Life, your new mom friend that soon will feel like an old friend. Twice a week, every week, I want you to come and join me as we cover moments in motherhood, marriage, sex, and more. Some moments worth savoring, others worth surviving, all with a laugh, pep talk, or F-bomb every now and again. I want you to come as you are, but leave the sugar coating behind because, guys, we know how sweet it already is. So what do you say? Up for picking some daisies? Hi, guys. Hey. Is that okay? Yeah. I don't see you two. There you go. Uh, I just see live. I don't see you both. Really? No. Is it not showing up on? Um, we can see we us. We can see both of us. Turn that off. Okay, let's see if we turn it off. If, it, if it's too bright, maybe. I just see, like, the live is good. I just see both your heads, like. This. So if we see our picture. What does that? Oh, I get it. Like, if we're too far apart. I get what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Probably been easier to say. I think it's closer. How's that? Eh, I don't see. I see Nat. I don't see you. <laughs> Just like creep on in. Just go. What about in. now? No. You you, you want to what, what for further? Yeah, yeah. There we go. Yeah. Whoa. Okay. Whoa. Hold on. Hold hold the phone, ma'am. That's wait. Good. What about is- now? Better, much better, awesome. You can see us both. Yes, awesome. Do you want that light on or not? You could. It's it looks great. Yeah, keep it. Where do you live? Fun, New Jersey. Where? New Jersey. Oh, okay. Jersey girl. Jersey girl. I'm like the least Jersey girl there is, except I do Mm. enjoy techno, and (laughs) that's really. I love that techno. Yeah, that's like my 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 go to. I call it. I have a rave clean playlist. All of that stuff. I actually, I listen to either your podcast or ra- I call it rave cleaning instead. Instead of rage cleaning, that way I don't traumatize my entire family. That is so I just funny. put on rave music and I you used to go to raves. No, I wish. My God, I got I I partied in college good, but I got I got out of college. I met my husband right after I graduated, and then we dated. <laughs> Got married, had a but baby. But mistake like, number one, right there, me, marry someone right out of college. I know, I know. That's why That's I'm like a great one. Yeah, we're. I think we're done with the baby train at this point, so we're like kind of slowing down. But I recently like got my nose pierced, and my mom is like, "What's going on with you?" And I'm like, oh, "Mom, my- I've I've been like someone to someone else for like the longest time. I got out of college, I got married, I had kids. I'm like." I'm just having fun now. And she's like, this is too young to for like, midlife. She's like, you're too young for a midlife crisis. And I'm like, that's not what it is. Shush. But you need fine. to go to a rave and take some Molly and like really come out. I know. I That was before like Molly and all that stuff wasn't big with my – I graduated my uh, when I was like, growing up in college. Like very serious conversation. Yeah, Molly, Molly no. wasn't really my no. thing then. No, it wasn't Molly. around. I didn't find it. Like cocaine was big, and <laughs> shrooms. And yeah, same. That was our uh, genre too. Yeah, Molly was. I think it was called ecstasy. Ecstasy. Yeah, but they decided yeah. to name it and call it Molly. They they yeah, wanted yeah. they wanted to they, reclaim it. They gave us big like uh, I remember in school they gave us like big demonstrations as to why you shouldn't do it i think it was part of like the whole dare thing and mm-hmm. i will forever remember like seeing girls dancing with like the pacifier in their mouth with like the glow sticks yeah and then they put a video about how it like screwed up their hormones for the rest of their life so they were constantly depressed and it terrified me so i was like oh, that's hey. what they say i'd like to get my hands back on that yeah because if my kids saw someone dancing with a pacifier they would never touch drugs again yeah. Remember the commercial we said, this is your brain? Yeah, this is your yeah. Brain okay. and it's well, we're, all gonna have to, we're all going to have to find that. We're going to have to read circle on that one. I know, right? Anyway, all right. I'm excited. Uh, Kat, I'm going to ask you to move in. I don't know if I can't see your full face. There we go. I can only see like a little half of your face. So if I uh, – yeah, there we go. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Mm-hmm. Lean in. Like, do like what so I'm doing. weird because I, I can see – because I have to get – I can see – we can see so much of us. Yeah, I don't know. Are you guys on your phone? Yeah. Maybe that's why. I don't know. I'm on my computer. Okay, okay, okay. That's why, but it's fine. We'll figure it out. Um. Anyway, I'm excited. Thank you guys for being here. I, I'm i like fangirling big time, but it's just because you guys are the OGs. You're the OGs of the mom realm, at least to me, at least. And I, even when I shared that I was having you guys on, I had so many DMs that said, oh my God, the OGs. And I was like, yeah, they they definitely are. I want to, and, and just a big thank you because you guys have inspired me to even like do my podcast. I think 
just hearing the format of how your podcast is, it's just, it's nice. The way you guys share and everything, I think it's, I think you guys get the credit for being OGs because you guys have shared so authentically. And I I think that's what we need to see more of. And I think that's what I've always strived to do is just be like, okay, we're not sugarcoating this. We're just going to say it as is. And yeah, it's refreshing to see. So thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Uh, so I want to start from the beginning with you guys, because I cannot remember the exactly what was going on in the video. I know you guys were sitting in a car, but I remember on Facebook, because I, I don't think it was big with Instagram and TikTok, but I remember being tagged in one of your first videos. I can't remember exactly. Oh my God. But I remember it thinking it was so funny. Did Where did all of this start? Like, how did this begin? Like, like actually, I start working at all? You sharing your content and stuff like that. So, you know, it was really inspired by we, we had, you know, we had babies and um, we, we thought it was going to be different than it was. And everywhere we looked, it felt like everyone was sharing a really perfect vision of motherhood and being a woman. And being it was a only wife. Pinterest. It was literally Pinterest. Yeah. Like that's all there was. There was no really yeah. other and like TV shows and like famous people and everything just looked perfect. And no, you could never see behind the scenes of anything. Yeah. And we were like, our experience does, isn't lining up with what we're seeing. So uh, a lot of people were uh, writing blog moms were writing blogs at the time, and um, we were really open about our experience as mothers, but we weren't writers. So we decided to start making videos and nobody was really making videos like that at the time. So, and you know, in the beginning, nobody was watching, no one was seeing it. And we just continuously, um, shared our experience. And it obviously, um, was resonating with people who were sitting, uh, being like, Oh my gosh, they're saying what I'm thinking, but nobody else is saying it. What's kind of crazy is I saw on our YouTube channel recently, we used to have conversations before we would go like a vlog before we would go into like an event or something. And it was yeah. like a back and forth. And I remember one pivotal one. It it was like, we were talking, but it wasn't a camera, but there was a camera and it was about camel toe. And it was just like the honest conversation. And I, people were like, Oh my God, that's so funny. And I feel like that's when it was like two conversations with best friends who are moms that became like mom truths. So we were having them Mm -hmm. and they were being captured in a different format. And we would go out and we would have sidebar. We'd be talking. We're live streaming. in these. No, we're like filming. Like before we go to an event, there are vlogs. Just talking. Yes. Yeah. Way back. I think that's probably one of the big ones that I saw. I I know it was like it, it was years ago. I can't even remember the year, but I remember being tagged in it by some of my friends. It probably was the camel toe one. I know it was something where my good friends would have tagged me. And I don't remember even if I had kids or maybe yeah. I just had my first, but it was just funny enough to be relatable outside of motherhood. So maybe it was the camel toe one. Where it, was like, it was pitch black. So good. We're in a car and it's <sighs> just a conversation. I'm like, oh my God, because there was no light. Like there wasn't these things that we had available. There's no ring lights. Like, yeah. I just was like, we have conversations that often people would stop and be like, oh my God, you two are so crazy. But yeah, it's kind of like it was a conversation that we put online, but not on purpose, but it was just caught. And then we started to do them and then actually film the conversation because we just would say what we had to say from the night before to the next morning. And then we'd get in the car and be like, oh my God. And then it <laughs> yeah. just really kind of became, I think all of us moms and women know exactly like you have no idea what happened last night. And then you haven't yeah. talked in like 12 12- eight hours and and something happens. And that's literally what we do every morning, even before we start work is we'll sit in her front room and we'll just beat the shit out of everything. And we have to almost like cut it down because we're like, we have to go work. Yeah. We often talk talk all day long. It's like three hours and we're like, shit, we got to go in. And and we've spoken to each other on the phone probably seven times that night and in the morning as well. (laughs) But you know, when you say like maybe even before you had kids, you might've seen it last night I was out and a woman came up and she's like, I'm here with all my friends. All my friends have kids. I don't have kids, but I found you and uh, you guys. And I, I all, I started sharing with my mom friends cause they didn't know who you were. And she's like, they're all over there. And they're like, they don't want to say hi, but she's like, I just had to say like, thank you. First of all, I love the content, but you have saved so many of my friends by yeah. just watching your content. Yeah. I'm probably, I'm one of those because I, I think it's, it's so refreshing to see. And I think, like I said, that's why I, fangirling right now just because you guys really were 
a big inspiration for me to get on because I tried it. Like when I started social media, my page kind of evolved and I kind of started off on the whole aesthetic from mm. especially with Instagram. So I remember I was joking. I had a guest on last night. We were joking around how with my kids, because I would have my kids like pose for a picture thinking that's what I would need. And I'd be like, you all sit down, <laughs> shut up, sit there, don't move. And then I would post and be like, oh, my cherubs. Yeah. Yeah loves of my life. And meanwhile, like behind the scenes, and I'm like, this is not how it's supposed to be. I was like, my life is chaos. I have three little ones. So it's like ac- actual chaos. And I'm like, I'm just not gonna, I'm just gonna share it. Cause what good is that doing for anyone to. I know. Cause you know, it just it, it. It really, when something looks too perfect. And even though we know that like social media is curated, like we know that in our core that so often it isn't what it seems. Yeah. Sometimes when you see it, you can't help but feel either jealous or guilty that you're not doing that. So every time someone shares something that's so perfect, you know that there's a group of women feeling bad about themselves. Yeah. No, I just had it. I uh, I shared a video. My littlest, she's 19 months old. She's obsessed with Get Low. Uh, it was one of like, I went crazy. I shared it when she was nine months old. She, I've been playing the song Get Low by Little John for her since she was in my womb. Like she's nuts. So to soothe her, I used to just play it for her to make her calm down. And it went crazy. I shared it when she was nine months old of me turning on the song and she goes nuts and like freaks out. So she still is obsessed with it. So I put up a video this morning of me ranking different Little John songs and she's just laughing because she thinks it's hilarious. Um, And someone just commented back saying, I wish I was a good mom like you are. Right. And I was like, I was like, and that's not my aesthetic. So I'm like, that's just a fun little moment. And I was like, you're, there's so many moments that you're not seeing per se. Like even this weekend, my husband was on, gone for a week and I was like, yeah, you should have seen me then. <laughs> that was a real doozy. But- and you know what? And you know what's so crazy is it's so many women feel just like how that woman felt like I, um, other people are better mothers. I'm not a good mom. Like the amount of, of guilt that s- women still carry mm-hmm. is, is so, um, much. And it's so, it's so sad because, you know, we know so many people, obviously we all know lots of moms and everyone's doing it differently, but like there are, every mom is a good mom. She's the best mom she can be. And that's yeah. enough. Yeah. 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 And depending on your circumstances, everything is so different. It depends on mm-hmm. the day. And that's mm-hmm. really like I I big thing that someone recently taught me, which has been a game changer in my again, and I know you guys are in a different realm, which I want to talk about like the teen years, but I'm in like my kids are six, almost six, four, and nineteen months old. So I'm like in the thick, thick. But it's just like someone told me about the quarter theory quarter method, but I break down my day into quarters. So mm-hmm. that way at least if I have like a really crap morning, I can be like, okay. And then the rest, it's just the first quarter kind of sucked ass a little bit. So I'm just going to go into the second, third, fourth and hope for the best and not grade it on a whole scale, which has been, you know, because that's yeah. really, that's, that's really helpful. Um, that's a helpful tool that like when you, if you share that with, with other, um, other moms, because sometimes you just need something like that. Mine is like, um, every two minutes I reset, but yeah. I, the quarterly one is a nice place to start. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. So I know you guys, so when you started sharing, you guys didn't really, you've never really incorporated your kids a lot into stuff. I know recently because they're older and they can have a say in things. I've been seeing more of your daughters on TikTok and stuff like that, which I think is so cool because I thought that they're best friends, but the young years, I didn't, we never really saw you guys in the super young years. Like, what do you, what do you remember from that time, especially compared to teen years? So like- we were online during that time. And a lot of content is from that time. I just think that it was so long ago. <laughs> no, the video wasn't really huge. Like, like there wasn't like reels and there wasn't all yeah. of the things. So we were able, I'm, I kind of feel thankful for that because our kids kind of got to grow up in a way that wasn't, um, really, we, there was no pressure to share them. I feel like a lot of people who have um, online businesses right now feel a lot of pressure and like, we know companies will try to sneak our kids in there. And we're like, no, if you want, if you want them, you can make a contract and then you can pay them and they can say yes or no. Like it's not a yeah. us decision. Um, and I feel bad for a lot of parents because I know that there's pressure to have them in there. Um, I think that it, you know, there's no easier stage. And I think that's the biggest like misnomer of parenthood. I think you become more um, numb to what the problems are in a really nice way. I just think that you, that's like, I was trying to think about what you were just describing and the word numb is exactly it. And it's not in a bad way. 
It's like you just learn to cope and realize like there's no, there's no, um, there's no time for you to think about what you feel. Yeah. Like yeah. it's not, it really becomes less about you, which I think when you have young kids, it should be about you because you're learning how to mom them. But really the shift hits you like a ton of bricks when it becomes about raising people rather than taking care of people. And there yeah. is a clear line that is drawn and you're like, oh, now I actually have to instill values and model and like model behaviors and care about what you're doing. And are these decisions going to impact you for your life? Like, I think yeah. it just because, and because when they're babies, it's a natural thing that you, you feed your child, you, yeah. you, you comfort your child. You, They're crying. It's, it's upsetting to you. You like, don't even have to think about that stuff. It just comes and yeah. it, it's insular. Like you're in like a bubble and you should be in a bubble. Like you're in a yeah. bubble. All you can think about is the morning, the afternoon, yep. nap time and bedtime. Yep. And then I just think it shifts and no one tells you it shifts. It just really happens. But I feel like motherhood prepare the little years prepare you for what you're, what's coming. I really do think it prepares you and it's okay. Like don't, no one be afraid of what's coming. It's just different and it's not less work and it's not easier. It's yeah. just different in a way that you're ready for it. Like it's literally like you're ready for it, even though you feel overwhelmed. I don't know yeah. how to describe it. That's also it. a really like for anyone who's afraid of the teenage years, what she just said is it, it's very comforting. Like yeah. you've, 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 you've worked for this and you're, because you had those small children, you're ready for it. That's such a, cause it is, it's true. It's like, you, and you can't even tell someone what it will be like. They have to yeah. feel it, you know? Yeah, well, it's, it's like anything, but even, and I've talked about this before because like I said, I think we've, I think we're done on the baby train. My husband and I haven't like for sure. I like that. So you're probably yet. having another one, just so you know. You are having another one. Well, let yes, a hundred percent. You're you it's, like after three kids. If it's even a consideration that you're, you're having, one. I, know. Well, I just can't like, close the chapter on it yet. But yeah, part of me is like, I know. But just then get, she, goes, she goes. I know. Yeah, just, we just, just like, get it know. out of the way. You, get it over with. So it's all, and then you then you oh. know after four you're done. Oh. You know that's. I know. I know. I would definitely be done. I would have. I would get C section. So I would just have them like take out every except for you would get twins then you'd have five (laughs) (laughs) yes that would be the gamble but no it's funny like it's closing that chapter is actually incredibly hard to do and that's why we're like we're teetering but i i've recently just talked about this and i said i I think a part of that closing of the chapter is because so many people scare you about the teenage years Mm -hmm. where it's like i don't necessarily feel like that's going to be the case i'm starting and that and no one talks about it i feel like the lead up for me at least is like always been about the having the babies and and Absolutely. creating that time and then people forget about to talk about like well, so many things that come after and that's and exactly like, that's exactly what happened to us the two of us yeah. were sitting there and we were like hold up wait um i don't know anything about this uh what are we going to there's nowhere to turn and that's literally why we started our business the common parent we yeah. made it for us because we weren't get the kind of girls we're going to sit and read like 10 books at night no. to get educated on stuff. What we wanted was just exactly like how we went to school and the kind of people we are. Give us, give us things really quick and fast. What yeah. can I do now? What can right I do now? now? And that, um, that preparation and that education and that support from experts. And we only ever have the kind of experts that like we can resonate with. And we understand what they're saying. They like, they're like doctors and, 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 yeah. and uh, experts that talk like normal people. Yeah. And so, um, and that has been literally what we turn to and what gives us confidence to like tackle these really big things that are happening with our teenagers. So no, there isn't a lot of places to go, yeah. but we made one. I, I also yeah. think that like, if you think about it, the, what's hard about little, like being, having little children is you're really, it's really life or death. Mm-hmm. Like it's so life and death. And that's a really scary, hard place to live in. Like you're constantly like, where are they? The stairs. And I feel like, again, that's for a reason because the threshold of death comes down when they get older. Right. So you are, you're, you're not living on the edge of like, is that a marble? What's in their mouth? Are they choking? Are they awake? Are they like, you live in this place of fear as with young children. And I think that's for a reason. Yeah. I think we have to go there because then when they get older, it's like you have capacity to to look at it differently and be like, okay, I can now look at this, not just in the moment, but I can look at it as like, okay, I can, I can look at them as people. And yeah. I think that 
it's, it's, it's good. It's good, but it, it doesn't get easier and there's not more time. It just gets yeah. different in a really nice way. If you, if you can see it as watching these people grow up and become people like yeah. people you are eventually going to have your life with. And memories with. Yeah. I mean, even, I mean, my grand and my oldest is almost six, so it's not there yet, but she's starting to, it's, she's there starting kindergarten, like, but it's years. different. Yeah. So I have, it's, it's interesting, but she's in kindergarten, but even coming home with like, it's interesting. Someone had asked me about that yesterday and I said, kindergarten is like the beginning of the kickoff of seeing like you're immersing them into the world. So it's like, she's with socializing with peers. So like we're getting the, the chat, different things, the phrases that she comes home with, like the different attitudes and stuff, which is like, eh. but it's also incredibly interesting. Cause now I'm starting to see things come out in her. Like she's really good at art which is really fun. So like, and I've said that before, it was like, it's actually, we kind of always think about like the first things like within that first year of life and the first this with little kid years, but I'm like, there's still so many firsts that we keep forgetting about. And I think we just, you know, that conversation stops and whatnot. And, it, and you know, um, it is, it is so interesting um, getting to know them. And for Kat and I, like, even though every year of life is hectic and crazy and stressful, we always want it. We always want to make space for fun for us. Yeah. And um, if you do feel like supported and you kind of um, learn how to understand why teenagers behave that the way that they behave, it really, it makes you feel more comfortable in the place and it, and it, and it gives you a, a better perspective on how to like, how to like your teen and how to have fun with them and how to, so that, because, you know, when you're scared of teenagers, you think it's just going to be like screaming and slamming doors and shitty attitudes and disrespect and all that. That seems scary. Yeah. But if you put yourself in the right position and learn to like know them and like them and have fun with them, yeah. like it can be a very entertaining and fun experience. Yeah. It's like motherhood's about you when they're younger and then it becomes about them when they're older. So you have to stop making it about you. And then because it is about us when we're younger, it's so much about like, we're so tired. Mm-hmm. I'm so overwhelmed. I can't. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, what do you need? Mm-hmm. Like, it's not what, nobody cares what you feel when you have teenage. Nobody cares that you're yeah. tired because you've been Ubering and have to wait till 1230 to pick up a yeah. kid and bring them home. And then the other one's up at six for sports. Like, nobody cares. It's about them and their feelings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I I think that's such a good point. I think that's also why it's important to lean into moms taking care of themselves during the little kid years because that's, it's just not happening a lot. That's one of the big things that I'm always reminding people of because it's just, I bought into it. I bought in for that for my second child. I bought into like the mommy needs to be a martyr and the mark of a good mom is to feel like shit. And guess how far that got me? Mm -hmm. Nowhere. I felt awful. It was a terrible, terrible time. Yeah. 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 Well, spinning it around. So I want to kind of go back into your friendship. You guys have been friends for years and years and years. Ninth grade. Okay. Ninth grade. Okay. And then you guys have just been friends since. And I saw that your daughters, like I said, are becoming friends. So that's probably like, so, coming, that's like, like a dream. We were born together. They we were, were born, born together. And then our, we, we got pregnant with our, her second and my third at the same time. And we had those babies together. We, yeah. we luckily we were able to plan it and make it happen, which is, I know it's, that's like a dream come true for a lot of friends, but we did. So those two have been together ever, every day since they were born. And yeah. then our babies are a year apart and they're like my tj said he writes on his piece of paper who's who's the most important person to you who's your best friend her daughter he literally wants to go he wants he's like if i and he doesn't like he has i mean he's only nine so i don't know what his future holds but he um he was like if i identify as a girl and if i identify as a year younger could i go to that school because her daughter goes to a girl's yeah. school until a year younger. And I was like, yeah. if I just say it to them, like, I- I'm a girl, will they just <laughs> let me in the school and I could go there? I'm like, oh, honey, honey. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's not go down that route. You could still see her. <laughs> oh, I love that. That's so much fun. With the relationship portion, though, of like getting into business, well, even just the parenthood portion, because the biggest thing, like, I had uh, questions or just a, like a, a bo- open box yesterday on my stories and I said, tell me or ask me anything. And a lot of the responses about telling me something was making mom friends is near Mm -hmm. impossible. And obviously, and I think one of the biggest things, and I had someone else say like, you know, navigating friendships when you have kids is so freaking hard. I'm there. um, And it's, I, I have kids and especially because I have friends that 
I'm in the stage of life where either they haven't had kids yet and they're just getting recently married. So they haven't had kids yet or they have kids that are much older. So all of our schedules are off. And for me, like right now, my, my youngest is down for a nap. I'm nap trapped. So I don't really go a ton of places because of that. So it definitely is made friendships harder. Did you guys have to navigate that at all when you're, I mean, you had babies close in age or close at the same time. Did, was that hard for you guys or even just maintaining this, a business relationship as friends? Is, were there any pain points or anything? I mean, between the two of us. Yeah. We just basically, it was, um, let's, just, time, let's just hang out every single time. night for the rest of our life. <laughs> yeah. There's no, there's nothing in between. And then, and then, Hey, let's, start, let's, uh, let's start something. I mean, we never intended it to be what it is. One thing led to another, but then we're like, Oh, let's do this. Okay. Let's do that. And we just do everything together. It's not even, we don't have to think about it. Yeah. I, I think that for mom friends, you know, we talked about this recently in another podcast and I think that people put so much pressure on it. And I think we forget like, number one, do you want that? Like, do you want your time and space? And if you don't, that's okay. Like if you're happy, you don't need to have 75 friends. Like I think we put a lot of pressure on like the list of what we need to do. Yeah. And then I think that when your kids get older, We've said this a lot. There's in between friends. So there's the friends that you see in the schoolyard. There's the friends that you see at the hockey rink. There's the friends that you see, you know, there might not be someone that you talk to all the time, but I just don't discount the people who are in your life in a role that isn't just um, like a best friend. I think that friendship comes in many forms. And if you take time, it will grow. And if you're interested in making a friendship with that person, text them or, you know, like you can grow friendships outside of what you think a traditional friendship has to be. And it it comes like with time. I mean, we have a ton of friends that maybe we're not going for dinner with on the weekends, but definitely we spend a lot of time with these people all year on the sports that they play. And I would say we know a lot about them and they would be our friends. Like you would consider them. I know them well. So I just think that take the pressure off. If you're interested in having a more of a friendship text them, call them, be like, Hey, I'm having a few people over. You want, like, you have to date them, literally date your friends. Don't just assume it's like going to happen. And if you want it, why do we spend so much time trying to find men? I bet you could find a best friend if you put as much time in that as you did into men. We'll be back after a quick break. I opening moments podcasts are real life stories of adversity encounters and perspectives. They are moments that can lift your spirits, give you some food for thought, or move you. For the introspective mind that likes to reflect, discover, and find solutions or meaning in a complex life, listen to Eye Opening Moments Podcasts. Yeah, yeah. I think it's it's interesting, too. I actually had with uh one of the girls my since my daughter's in kindergarten now I have you know people she's meeting people through there and I had a mom come over who lives in town and she has four kids and she, we were talking about it and she said that's definitely a dynamic that a lot of people don't consider is the amount of kids that you have definitely throws you a little bit and I was like yeah because she's her kids are all little um she had two kids that are on the spectrum so she was like it's just a lot and when I know that someone's going to invite me somewhere they know that they're getting a package deal. And I was saying, I was like, that's always an interesting thing because it's a package deal. So you have to know that my kids are a part of me, but also husbands, husbands are a package deal. That is so weird, right? It's It's so hard. If you're like, you want to be friends with like them and stuff. And then they're like, oh, and then the husbands get to, it's like these two random people are now supposed to like hang out and be friends. And some people's husbands are so weird. It's like, you should never- You should never have the, it's like you're a package deal. You can be friends outside of husbands. I really think that like, you can really, there's space to do it all. And I do think that we just think we can't, but there's always time to like text someone or call someone or, you know, go for a coffee or a workout class or a walk. Like there's, there's times to do things yeah. without men and without children eventually, eventually. Yeah, absolutely. I meet so many moms after school drop off going for coffee together. Like they all go and have like conversations together because they have something mm-hmm. in common, which is their kids in the same class or whatever. So just be open to it. People, be, yeah. everyone's like, I can't make a friend. I bet if you stopped and said hello to someone at your kid's school, your kid's class, your kid's something, and you put some effort in, they could become friends. Oh, I'm awkward as all hell. Whenever I meet someone, I'm like, hi, do you want to be my friend? I'm like, yeah. I, like can I have your number? I'm literally so 
blunt about it where I'm just like, can I, do you want my, I'll give you my number. Like I'd love totally. to go get dinner and I, we just go. It's like a blind date. And exactly. It's, but that's how it's gotta be. And it's, it's fun. I, I actually kind of like it and I like it without the kids, obviously. But when kids, especially in the little kid years, it's ugh, everyone's on eggshells about like what they're doing, how much screen time your kids are getting. Your kids my get kids. Yeah. I'm like, okay, well. Let's just leave them out of it. We can just. I have to tell a really life. funny story. This is yeah. natural. I shouldn't really be telling it, but I, I find it <laughs> hilarious because I know her kids so well. And yeah. I, if you don't have boys in really close in age, you don't know how they fight. Okay. Like they just fight differently. I have um, my ne- nephews are really close in age and uh, like my friends have kids and they literally pound the shit out of each other. Okay. And it's it looks like, very dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> so this this weekend, her kids are in a fight outside, and the neighbors come <laughs> over and knock on the door, and she's like, "I mean, okay," and they're like, "No, it's bad," and she's like, "Okay," and I yeah. was just laughing because you know it's like when if you you kind of have to know the other person's kids because mm-hmm. if you roll in and they get in a massive fight and you have three girls who like color you're like never again like that's never happening again but once you begin to know the ins and outs and that it's not just how you parent sometimes kids Mm -hmm. are just looking to fight like that's just what they do Mm -hmm. you can kind of so you do have to find the right people to introduce your crews to that That is a really good one look at like the dynamics and ask hey do they fight and if Mm -hmm. they're like oh my god that's probably the good match for you you know what i mean yeah. Well, that and, was even with the mom that came over with their four friends. Like I love that. And so one of the things that she came over and what's hard, and like I said, a few of her kids were on the spectrum is they have speech delays. One of my oldest had speech delay, but that was like something that I had to navigate. And there's so much like with the delayed portion and she, you could tell that you're on eggshells when you're kind of going through and like, you're so nervous that your kids won't be yeah. kind or yeah or just or just understood the same way like we know our kids yeah. we know how they act but like especially when you're dealing with kids on the spectrum and things like that and I was like have at it I'm just one of those like come over and whatever my house is designed for kids at this point so I'm like it's, yeah it's fine but it's hard it definitely is it's- just bet them bet them ask them a few questions about how they <laughs> yeah <laughs> is your can you break things in your house like just let us know how that goes and then you can be like okay I can come over yeah. I know. Yeah. Right. The, Cause that's my house. My house is my, my kids just recently took a Sharpie to my couch. So that's. <gasps> oh um, no. Yeah. Except they spelled out. Uh, my daughter says she didn't do it. I don't know if it's my son. He knows how to spell, but he wrote out my daughter's name on the couch. Okay. So, I thought that's better than if they wrote like, fuck, you know what I mean? That's true. That's, yeah. that's true. That is a potential. My, uh, mm-hmm. one of my, <laughs> one of my favorite videos I've ever put up of my daughter, we were making a smoothie and I put it up on Instagram because it was so flippant funny. I've recorded us making a smoothie and she takes a piece of mango and she just puts it in the blender and she says, bombs away, fuckers. <laughs> she just drops it. <laughs> I, just, I love that. I slowed it down, but you, my face goes, what? And I was like, where did you? Well, I know where she learned it. I say, Fuck that's all. really funny. So, that's I that's just, another thing. I, you know, like, like, um, language and like mm-hmm. bad words. Some people are like, if they are here, kids saying like bad word, they're like, some moms are like, oh my God, like that child, yeah. you know? Yeah. yeah. My brothers, they're not allowed to say fart. And I'm like, oh, get over yourself. That was my life. <laughs> That was my life growing up. That was my F word. I wasn't allowed to say fart. I had to say fart fanugan. Fart fanugan. Fart fanugan was the word my parents made us say. Fart fanugan. So I'm like, like, what is your problem? I said, my brother, I'm like, (laughs) I like told my niece to death. I'm like, just say it. Say fart. Say fart 10 times loud in front of them. And they were like, I can't. I'm like, say it. And he was, what did they call it? I just can't say it. I don't know. I don't know. Toot. Yeah. I don't even know. My parents are, my parents were like the type of like, you just don't talk about it at all. Oh, and yeah. yet like, yeah. So it's interesting with them, but it's, well, and that's funny. Yeah. Because I'm, I just have a mouth on me. I'm, my husband's a police officer. So like, we just tend to cuss a lot. So that's the Jersey in me and my kids, I've just explained to them. I'm like, it's not a bad word. I kind of like to get that bad word connotation out of there. I was like, it's how your intention is set. So I was like, you could say it in your room, <laughs> like go say it in your room. Just like watch who you're saying it around because not everyone likes those words. Or but I think that's smoothie. That's yeah. How- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There sense. you go. But like even, um, like, and I think some parents get so harped on that. And I think that's a good point, but like on the flip side. So like I said, my daughter's in kindergarten, she's bringing home phrases. One that stopped me in my tracks a couple of days ago, she out of nowhere said, I'm going to kill myself. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's, that's, that they all do that now. Mm-hmm. Just, you know, oh my or, go, God. Or, go kill yourself. Go. It's like, I, 
GYL or I forget. We've yeah, and it that. wasn't like it wasn't like us. Uh, she's five, so I'm like, okay, well, where I was like, where did you learn that? And she told me, boy, I taught her that. And it wasn't like you need to go do that. It was just like if something happens, I'm gonna kill myself. And I'm it's like, oh, it's KYS. It's like the short from the gate. Like they'll say it. In, we were literally talking about this last night, like KYS, and um, it, they'll say it to each other like as a phrase, like kill yourself, like literally as something that but they just flip it. Like you're that age i yeah. remember the first time i heard one of my kids say that and obviously it feels like you can't like oh my gosh like yeah. we need to go to the doctor yeah um, yeah but what but sometimes that's just the most dramatic thing they can think to say to get yeah. attention you know yeah. or they're hanging out with the youngest of four and their <sighs> oh, their oldest is you know 17 and they're saying all kinds of things and the little one is just picking it all up and then taking yeah. it to school and teaching yeah. Jenny about the blowjobs. Oh you know God. what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's just, like, I'm like, just how it goes. And that's what I'm like, for, for my youngest, I'm like, he shouldn't be friends with like firstborns because yeah. because they're a different, you, you don't put your your night, your night <laughs> uh, perfect, pure child with the fourth little boy. Yeah. Like, don't come near my kid. You're not going to like it. <laughs> yeah, that's so true. Oh, I love that. Uh, okay, well, actually, let's go into because I'm just going through some of the questions that I put on some things that moms overshare online that you think that you have boundaries on. Are there boundaries with you guys with what you? I, I think know that my new thing is anything that makes you feel uncomfortable, like watch, like anything you see uncomfortable that you're watching, um, is your boundary. Like I sometimes get uncomfortable watching people put certain like information about their kids on there, but that's my boundary, like yeah. not necessarily theirs. So I don't judge other people's boundaries. I think that we just, you know, we, we really try to make it about us because, um, you know, your kids grow up really quickly and they yeah. begin to understand the ramifications of them online. And so I yeah. think we've always been, they're kind of a group and anonymous in who they are or what, who's having the concern, but we try to share our perspective, not necessarily, it's not about them. It's like how we feel in the situation rather than, um, that kid did this and they're terrible or they shouldn't have, or we don't share our kids, friends. We don't really talk about parent, uh, like in-laws. We don't talk about, you know, we just, we're just not, we just try to be kind and we yeah. don't put other people down and we try to make sure our kids know they're loved and that we're proud of them. And although everyone can be a jerk, um, they're not jerks, if that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. No, I love that. I, that's something I'm navigating because I started sharing my kids, but it was before like the big concern for sharing kids really came up. I feel like that has really blown up this year mm. where I just have been doing that. But with my kids being older, my older kids, they're rarely ever seen. My 19 month old, she is obsessed with me. So she's literally on me all the time. So I'm like, it is what it is if in their background, but that's like a big thing that I'm trying to like navigate and mm -hmm. slowly th push them out of. I think behaviors are all the same when they're younger. Everyone throws a tantrum. Everyone has like, they like yeah. when the behaviors are all the same, it's less than when you begin to show your kid in pain at like eight years old when they've yeah. just like gotten an F or their dog died and you're like, tell me how you really feel. Like, and then you yeah, feel uncomfortable for like the vulnerable kid, you know? Yeah. I even stopped doing like, cause for a while, it's so interesting cause you don't even think about it sometimes, but like even like the vlogs and morning vlogs. I used to do those a little bit when I was trying those out. Cause you see everyone doing that stuff and you're just like not thinking much about it. And I was like, I'm stopping. I just don't want my kids to always remember me with a camera on my, like my mm -hmm. phone in my hand. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm just want this to be, you guys do your thing. I'll be over here and we'll, we'll make this work. But I also mm -hmm. just want it to be positive, which actually going into like criticism and everything with like even just at one of the top searches when I type in you guys. Well, one, I like it's asked if you guys are a couple. I think that's funny. One of like the recommended searches. Mm -hmm. But one of the first things is cat and nat weight loss and mm -hmm. things like that. So, mm -hmm. I mean, you guys look fabulous, but I yeah. Love, that's hilarious. It always changes. Just, it's usually yeah. husbands. Now it's weight loss. I they just, really dropped the search. I just saw that one. I Net worth know. is another one. That's a hilarious one too. Yeah. yeah that, was, that was awesome when, uh, when this, they, it, if you Google that one time it said that we were worth a hundred million dollars <laughs> and I was like, oh my gosh, is like, is this a dream or do we really have a hundred million dollars? And so people actually thought that like yeah. we had a hundred million dollars. And then it went down to like $10. So it was hilarious. It was, all the searches <laughs> are fake. Just so they don't want to listen to the searches. It's hilarious. Yeah. And yeah. Well, with the weight loss stuff, yeah. like, but how does that feel? Like, yeah, I know you guys have daughters and stuff like that. It's obviously just. You know, no, honest to God, I think that people like, 
if you followed us for a long time, we are the size we were before when we had one baby. Like yeah. that when we, and I think that people don't realize you get capacity when your kids grow up and you begin to age and you begin to like, yeah. holy fuck, I actually have to do this for my health, not for vanity. And I really do think people, you know, and we are ask us that like, fuck, like when you begin to have to be concerned when your parents are aging and you're like, wow, I really can't just do this because I want to be vain. Like I yeah. have to work out or I will lose my muscle mass. Like yeah. you have to go get a mammogram because you're like every, all of these things, people just are so focused on one thing and yeah. you can yeah. talk to the cows come home, but people don't want to hear the answer. So you're just kind of like, all right, no, you can't please everyone. So I think when you get to the age of 40, then everyone come back and talk to us and you yeah. let us know what you have to do differently and then come and have an opinion because Weight and these conversations are not prevalent when you're older because you have to do it because yeah. otherwise you will die early. Like yeah. we, you have to take care of, you have to work out, you have to drink water, you have to eat healthy. You can't eat cheese anymore. You can't eat dairy anymore. You yeah. can't eat fried food anymore or you shit your pants. And if you do, you're really lucky that you can do that. So like, yeah. Yeah. I think that people just forget that you're aging and you really do your doctor's like, well, it's just always a go. conversation. I don't even get yeah. it. It's just a conversation. You know, I don't even understand it's in the younger generation, literally yeah. in the young, it, when people get it's, older. Yeah. It's the younger generation. And then it's definitely the older generation too. I mean, it's like my mom's years. Like, I, Oh, it's definitely our like never talk about it ever. God. They just oh, like, they're right. concerned about their health. They're their, their health, but not no, about it's their still weight. such an aesthetic thing. I'm, amongst my mom's friends and stuff, it's always been an aesthetic thing. So like, but even, and I've heard it even with my kids. So my kids have always been in like, my husband's six foot four, he's 220 pounds. Like he's a big guy. My kids take after him in terms of everything. Statistically, they've always tracked on the 99th percentile for everything. It's great. They're healthy kids. Um, but I've always had comments made about them because they, they look older than they are. I had someone say it about my 19 month old when she was about a year old, uh, when about a year old. And this was like a primarily fed breastfed baby. Like I didn't really do much. She was good, good size baby. And someone said, tell your mommy to stop feeding you. And it was one of my mom's, one of my mom's friends. And I was like, Oh my God. Yeah, we had that with our, our daughters are bigger than us and taller than us. And yeah. we also have big husbands like you. I, I yeah. just think that, you know, your kids grow up and you have capacity for yourself and then you can look and be like, what makes me happy? And what can you have capacity, not just eat chicken finger, um, like nubs anymore. And, yeah. and, mm. um, crust. And I just think that you get to a place where you're like, and what about me? Like, you just feel bad. Like you just don't feel good. And some no. people keep it their whole lives, but we had, you know, seven children in a really busy life. And we didn't, I mean, I hadn't, I stopped going to the gym for like five, um, like five years. And I just started going back in, in January. And I was like, you know, I think you just begin to make time for yourself, not only because you want to, but because you kind of have, you have to. And I also yeah. think like when we're talking about like criticism and people like saying things and how, like, how do you react to it and all of that is like, um, you know, you, uh, some people get to this place in their life earlier and some people get later and some people never get there. But if you're just confident with like, you actually not like be confident, but if you're actually like, you know, yourself and you're comfortable with who you are, yeah. things other people say, like, I mean, in a, in a, in a, just a basic way, I don't care. Like, I, yeah. I don't care about your opinion. And like, it's like, you can't hurt me because I, like, I know I, who I am and I know like what I stand for and your comments can't hurt. And we want the, our children to know that too. Like forever when anyone's ever saying anything, yeah. everybody wants that for their kid, you know, yeah. to not be hurt by something someone else says, like, you know, like people will say things to my, his own freaking siblings will say to my youngest one, something he's like, yeah. he'll, he said, he says, I'm an idiot. Or he says, I'm not smart. I'm like, are you an idiot? And he goes, no, I go, who cares what they say? Like, yeah, that's so basic, but it's, it's really, it's a, it's a great armor to have yeah. when you can finally just know who you are. And I think yeah. that like on um, anything weight related, if people's appearance and weight triggers you in some way, that's really, really, thing. really, really stop and, and think about what is Why? bothering you because no man is going after another man for the way they look. Like no. I just like, really, it's a, it's a, it's a big problem. And if yeah. we want to, if we want our children to grow up, um, confidently, Stop talking about it. It's like so funny. I'm, I'm I was, like, I was at the rink yeah. and I 
never heard this in my life. And you know, you've heard this conversation with women a million times. And there were these older guys, I guess one was a coach, but they were like older than our husbands. They were like older. And he goes to him, Hey buddy, do you lose weight? Looks like you dropped some LBs. And I was just like, I turned over because I was like, you never hear men talking no. about that. And no. I was like, that's just, it was so unique. And, and the guys were like, yeah, I totally did. Yeah, I like, look great. I'm only drinking 12 beers a week now. You know, my tummy's down. Like, yeah, good for you, bud. Yeah, no, I, I think we really need to change the conversation to like, you know, our, we, we need to focus Just more on away who from we it. are as people and yeah. less on who our, our generation could teach so much to the younger generation, but we yeah. just seem to cannot let it go for the life of us. No, no. It's just, it's a wheel that keeps on turning. I don't even, I don't bring it up in this house at all. I, I it's one of like my pain points. I dealt with like eating disorders all throughout like my teen years. So for me, it's like, mm. we are going to nip that so hard, yeah. but it's, it's flow. It floats everywhere. Even just at the doctor's office. I've told my doctor, I was like, please just don't yeah. bring it up. If there's a concern, pull me to the side and I'll figure it yeah. out. But like, let's yeah. just nip that. It's just, it's an interesting, interesting beast, but all right. I don't want to keep you guys too long. Uh, do you want to do some sex confessions? I don't know if you guys have ever. I oh, have... Well, because you want to, because you know how sexual we are. You want us to confess. I that. did sex confessions for the longest time. If you guys want, like, if you have downtime today, go to my, the Very Mary Live page. I have a highlight. I have a few. I have like three different highlights of sex confessions. I did them for the longest time before my page grew. And once it grew, I got nervous that it was going to attract the wrong right. person. Are they your confessions? Oh, no. They're everyone in my communities, but they're yeah. Good. nuts. They're not just like the standard. They're like, I want to be I like tower bridged. I don't know what that is. We'll go through some of these. I don't know. I have people that are swingers that follow me. Yeah, yeah. but that's very common, especially I when know. I didn't realize that. About uh, it. I have a lot. Let's see. I I will pull. <laughs> they're so interesting. We'll do those and then I'll let you guys go because they're fun. Um, okay. Let's see. Uh just last week, this is from someone, just last week, mid-position changed. My five-year-old walked in and sell, into the room and said, you guys are too loud. Too loud. Too loud. Five-year-old. I've never. Have you guys been caught? Having yeah. Oh, I have sure. not. That I know no. of. I could have been. I don't think they'd ever tell me. Yeah, they probably just walk in quietly. He, hers stopped and stared for a while. <laughs> yeah. As far but. as I know, it's only that baby, and it's been like twice. <laughs> but, I mean, uh, yeah, poor guy. Yeah. Well, that's my fear. I, I deadbolt that door shut. Oh, my God. Um, going through a divorce and can't wait to be tower bridged yet again in my life. Do you know what that is? Tower bridge? Tower bridge. Tower bridge. Tower. I'm thinking it's kind of Eiffel Towering. Do you know what an Eiffel Tower is? Well, no. I know what the Eiffel Tower is. It's like two people together. They come up and they like, they like create their hand. They put their hands together and then one's giving while the other is receiving. Some like girls in stuff? the middle. It's kind of like an A. So picture like the girls in the middle. So she's getting. Oh, it's two people. It's a threesome. Yeah. Three people. Oh, yeah. oh. I was like, well, these people are flexible. <laughs> I just don't know how the front one gets in while you're standing. You know, that's tricky. They have to be like shorter than the other. The girl yeah. will have to be the tallest. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's They'll interesting. So... Think about it. You can also be two girls and a guy. Two girls and a guy. But how are you? Okay. Hold on. Actually, I got a definition. Tower bridge. Hands on knees. Have one sit behind you, open your mouth. Guys are the towers, you're the bridge. Like what? So she's like this? <laughs> Tower, yeah, hold on. Hands it's on knees, breath. have one sit behind you. Yeah. And it's then a it's a the sit. other one nah. is putting it in your mouth. Got it. Okay. Great. That's interesting. Oh, this is one. I'm in my mid 30s and I've never had an orgasm. Oh yeah. I've met people. I really have. I've given out a lot of um, dildos to, to people in this situation. And I have to tell you when they get the dildo and they figure out how to do it because some people, yeah, so they've never had one. I assume yeah. not even during, like by themselves, play by yourself, figure it out. Everything can yeah. get better. Yeah. I feel like there's a lot of, usually whenever I've had people submit things like that, there's always religious trauma associated with it. I feel like there's always a huge... Oh, you go deep with them. Wow. We just get like flat out submissions. Like we don't oh, yeah. get the, the history. But I always want to yeah. know more. 
Yeah, I always ask questions, but and someone email like gives me one because I I just I message all like all the time, but they give me full on stories. A lot of it's religious trauma, and I'm like, oh, okay, that's interesting. Wow, um, it makes me feel bad though because I, yes. I don't understand why that's even more. Uh, as we've gotten older, aka in our fifties, we are way more sexual than we were ever in our twenties. Great news! Great oh my news! Gosh, that's exciting. How about forty? I mean, you guys are in your forties, so how's the forties compared to terrible? Yeah, no. <laughs> okay. Good to because know. also your teenagers don't go to sleep anymore. Oh shit! Yeah. So you got there's no there's not even like seven like you don't even see the person you're married to. You're like oh wow how's your life are you good? I okay. heard when you turn forty you're gonna get horny at women. I'm like we're waiting hey. we're waiting. Yeah. Well, it's also hormonal. I would imagine because yeah. that's I like that. Well, let's just blame everything on hormones. Hormone. Yeah, my that's favorite what I do. thing in the world. And I love all this the, now. All the perimenopause because you peri in like, like thirty five or something. I, I also think, love. I think you're we, always peri. I love when we blame kids for like you know being terrible people because they're hungry. Now yeah. with hormones, it's my favorite thing in the world. It's easy. It's an easy cop out. You know, it controls everything. Hormones. Uh, here's here's one. Having sex in bed at three a.m. My three year old bursts in the door and starts screaming the ABCs at us. I've got so many questions on that. Like 3 a.m., three-year-old, ABCs. I'm like, wow, that's a lot in one set setting for them. Yeah, I don't know about that. Uh, is it just me or is penetration so much better after having kids? Oh. Yeah, I don't remember. Wow. To be honest with you. I didn't notice a difference. Uh, yeah, I don't Maybe know. Maybe they got sewed back up tighter or something. Yeah, but I feel like it kind that of – I don't know. Just I, I don't just know. from a woman perspective, I, I don't. Not think at first. I mean, during postpartum, absolutely not. I am like it's like a Sahara desert in that <sighs> battlefield. But I don't know. Yeah, I I can't remember to be honest with you. It's been yeah. fourteen years since I've had pre, fifty since I've had pre penetration of babies. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I let's see. Okay, let's go into the other ones, and then we'll call. We'll do like five more. Uh, I crave. Water, the emoji, I'm assuming come in me after having my baby, and I have no idea why. Never wow. have thought about it. She craves that it. She that's a fetish. Congratulations. Yeah. I'm so jealous. Isn't that a fetish? fetish? Isn't there a pregnancy fetish? Like um yeah, probably. Yeah. I'm like very jealous of this. Congratulations to that. I know that there's a pregnancy like with being attracted to pregnant women, but I think there's like a a need like, to get pregnant. Yeah, it's a it's a it's the want to get someone pregnant fetish. It's like um mm-hmm. I forget what it's called, but it's literally a fetish where it's like the want to get pregnant. So like it turns women on if like I know if it would do it for me. If my husband said, Let's get you knocked up, it would probably turn me on. I don't know why. I love that but, for you. Congratulations. Yeah, well, yeah that's no, fine. Not, he does that shit to me. We're in bad news bears. I don't want any of that. Um You're having a baby. We know what it is. <laughs> Well, I'll keep you posted. Uh, I want to try out a remote controlled vibrator with my husband. Anyone familiar with this? Anyone? We, we tried one. I put, we tried, did we? Or no balls. I can't remember. We, we, we try thing, weird things sometimes and we laugh. I, that doesn't, that wouldn't do it for me. I don't know. It's worth it. No, I, can't, I, didn't, I don't remember. There was a Facebook live days when we used to try things on live. Sorry, I didn't, <laughs> did you say using a toy with your partner? No, and a little remote control. So you're like, remote over control. The front of then. I don't think they meant partner like you and me. No, I know. I'm saying we tried though. You and I tried. <laughs> but we did. Yeah. So I, yeah, no, I don't know. I'm like, I, I don't know. Well, like, it was weird. She said, Does anyone have experience? I'm like, no, we do. Though. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, been married for almost 13 years and I just tried reverse cowgirl. I thought it was awkward, but it was also hot as hell. Oh, wow. That's an easy one just to finish it off. Yeah. Here you go. Um, and then let's see. The last one I can grab is I'm a stay at home mom. And it's very nice to not be in control for a little bit. So she enjoys being tied up. I like when he ties me up. Wow. She must have a good bed. That's exciting. To I know. That's good. Again, it's great to have a fetish in life. If you can have that, you're winning. I think it makes sense for stay-at-home moms. You're on like so many things and caring. Why not? Just kind of take that. Last Suze, you sounds like fun. She wants to just like have not have to make any decisions. Yeah. Just tie <laughs> me up and do what you want. What That's you want, great. What you want. That, yeah. That's good for lazy people. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Just lay there. That's what I do. It's fine. You know, starfish it. Just lay there. Take it easy peasy. Call it a day. Mm-hmm. That's the stage of life that I'm in right now. It's interesting. Mm-hmm. But anyway, <laughs> you guys are the best. Thank you so much for this. I think it's this has been a great conversation. It's fun. If, like I said, go check out the sex highlights of my page if you want a good chuckle. They're, that was just like a preview of it. They're wild. Can't like, wait. Deep throating gagging stuff mm-hmm. and I'm like I'm growing up. Yeah. 
Oh, we yeah. yeah we've I, I think I've, we've heard they, a lot. I, I feel very vanilla when I read any of that stuff. Oh, yeah. Yes. Incredibly vanilla. But oh, yeah. We'll see. Time of life. Time of life. Yeah, it's time of life. Exactly. Just, yeah. That and my Over husband doesn't have I, – I, this is one last thing. Husband's not having the same sex drive as women. I've had that before where women actually have a higher sex drive than their yeah. husband. That's, that's me where my husband's just like kind of eh, chill and then he depends on the phase and he's just never been someone that's like – let's absolutely go ham. And then you have the opposite of guys that are like, they need it like all the time. And I'm like, you yeah, know, we can, we can, we're good. We're, we're chill. Thank God. Cause that would be. Thank God. Yeah. Interesting. So anyway, I appreciate it. Thank you guys for being here. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Yeah. It was fun. I'll, uh, I'll keep you guys posted as to when all of this comes out and I'll have my assistant email your assistant and stuff like that. Um, uh, get pictures, all that links and whatnot, but yeah, I appreciate it. And thank you for thank just your you. content and everything. It's just, this has been an honor to have you and, uh, yeah. Thank you. Have go, an go, go enjoy the rest of your, um, what do you call it? Nap jail. Yeah. Nap, nap trapped. I'm going to, um, I have. She's down. She's been down for an hour. I put her down early. That's why we were able to get on early, but I'm going to. Amazing. Do nothing. Thank I have you. Other kids at school. So, all right. Thanks, oh, guys. God, enjoy. Yeah, thanks. Bye. Another episode down. Thank you all so much for listening. If you love today's episode, I would be so appreciative if you would leave a rating and review. I cannot begin to tell you how much those mean to me, but also how much they help me get in front of more eyes and more ears. As always, be sure to check back every Tuesday and Friday for a new episode, whether it's an episode with me, me and my husband, me and Katie, or just another incredible, amazing guest. Stay tuned for more honest, real, raw chit chat. And hey, do me a favor before you go. Remind yourself how amazing you are, how enough you are, how special you are. And boy, oh boy, I sure am glad to have you here. Thanks, friend.